Welcome to our dear viewers, my name is Benjamin Gear, and I'm sitting here in the studio with David Steele, the founder of Truth Planters, and I'm asking him what this organization is and what they do here in Hungary. David, I'm so glad that you are here with us in the studio. Welcome. How old were you when you gave your life to Jesus? Do you remember that? And did your family have a Christian background? Well, it's really good to be with you, Benjamin. Um, I actually come from a family where both my parents were not from Christian families, but both had dramatic encounters with God before I was born. So as I was growing up, I heard their stories. And my dad actually was uh, taking drugs around the age of 16 and 17. And he was sniffing glue, you know, powerful glue that you sniff it and it gives you a high, but it's damaging your body really badly. And one day he was walking along the street and he'd been sniffing glue and he felt this pain in his chest. And he said the pain was so bad, he kind of crouched over on the street and he thought, I'm going to die in this moment. And as he was bent over on the street in pain, a man came out of a building and started to talk to my dad and pray for my dad. And my dad gave his life to Jesus and never went back to drugs. So I heard that story as a boy growing up. And then my mum told me that when she was about 19 years old, she received some advice from some people about dieting, which was actually really bad, but she received it and started to change her diet at the time, which led to her getting very sick with anorexia. So she was very thin. And of course, the deception is that you think that you're overweight. And she got very sick and she was in bed for almost a whole year, unable to live her life. Uh, until one day, she doesn't know why, but a few years before that, she had painted a cross on her bedroom wall. And as she lay there in her bed with no hope for the future, she looked up at the cross on her bedroom window, on her, on her bedroom wall, and she said, Jesus! And she told me that as she called out on the name of Jesus, it was like she had been pulled out from a deep pit. And somehow she knew she was going to get better and she had hope for the future. And then she started to write songs. So she was writing songs about what Jesus had done for her, how he had saved her. And I was hearing these songs and that is how I heard about Jesus. But it wasn't until I was 17 years old that I really had an encounter with God myself. And, and this happened in a church in London because I'm from England. Um, I was sitting on the front row of a church in London and the pastor was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And he was talking about how God doesn't just want us to know about him from what we read in the Bible or what we hear at church. But actually, he really wants to know us. He wants to know us intimately. He wants to have a real living relationship with us. And he wants to put his power in our lives to enable us to do the things that we read about in scripture. I remember thinking, this is amazing. And I could see right through the Bible where this had happened to so many different people. And then in the book of Acts, uh, and I remember saying, Father, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit at, at the end of this service? And, and as I did that, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit come into the room. I was powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit. But it was interesting because just before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I felt God speak to me in my heart. And I felt him say to me, David, will you lay down your life for me, regardless of what anybody thinks of you from this moment forward? And, and that was the challenge. It was like, David, I've laid my life down for you. Now, will you lay your life down for me? And as I said yes, and I fell to my knees, that was when he filled me with his spirit. And I think it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because some people are asking God to fill them with his power, but they haven't first submitted their lives to his authority. And why would he give us his power if we're going to use it for our own good ideas? I, I feel that he wants us to um, first of all say, God, I'm willing to obey you and to do what you want with my life. And then he fills us with his spirit. So, so that was a day where I would say everything changed. And I describe that day as the day that David Steele died, because that was the day that the life of Jesus started to live 
through me. And that was about 17 years ago now. So you came to Christ at the age of 17, but when did you begin to do things for the Lord? Not only following him, but actively doing things for him. Well, it was actually a few months after I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was sitting in my garden one day and I was just praying and I had my eyes closed and I saw a vision of myself standing on a stage with a few hundred people and I was teaching from the word of God. And I thought to myself, that cannot be me. I'll tell you why. Because a few years before that in school, they had asked us to do a presentation mm -hmm. where we had to give a speech in mm -hmm. front of our classmates. And out of all the people in the class, I was the only person who could not stand in front of the other students and give a talk. And I remember the day really clearly, I had decided that I would talk about football because mm -hmm. I thought, I know so much about football, this is gonna be really easy. And I remember my classmates stood up and gave really good speeches. Um, some of them were not so good. Yeah. And I thought, I can do better than that, you know. And I walked up to the front of the classroom and uh, I saw all the faces looking at me. I don't know if you've ever seen in a cartoon where somebody goes red from their feet yes. up to the top of their head. Well, it felt like that. I went bright red. Everything that I knew about football just fell out of my brain in that moment. And I could barely even say my name. So I was thinking, how am I going to stand in front of people and teach the word of God? But of course, I don't believe that God ever gives us a calling that we can achieve in our natural ability. And I believe that he always gifts those he calls so that actually we know that it's not us doing it, mm -hmm. but it's him doing it through us. And a few months later, my um, pastor asked me if I could speak at church. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is, I just can't do this. But I remembered the vision. So yeah. I said, yes. And I stood up in church that day and something was different. And I knew it wasn't me. Somehow I was communicating clearly and I was communicating in a way that reached people's hearts and spirits. And that was when I knew God's given me a gift. But of course, when you've received a gift, you have to start putting it into practice. And the Bible talks about, Paul the Apostle says to Timothy, fan into flame the gift that God has given you. And I realized I need to use this gift and I need to honor God and seek to glorify God by speaking what he wants me to speak. And so that was the beginning for me. And so I started preaching in church and things like that. And then very soon after that, I went to university. And again, God spoke to me and said to me, David, I want you to start a church. So at the age of 20 years old, I started like an evangelistic mission in our university. And that was when I I was supposed to be studying, right? Yeah. But the majority of my time was focused on how can I lead people to Christ? How can I teach and equip them? How can I fulfill the great commission of Jesus? So, so you were there as a university student. You went there to study, but you ended up planting a church. How did your studies go and how did the church planting go? Well, it was interesting actually that um, God gave me a vision of a place that I had seen once before and it was an underground part of one of the old traditional churches mm -hmm. in our city. And it was a place where they did youth meetings. And mm -hmm. I saw a vision of an alpha course happening in that room. Mm -hmm. So I approached the pastor of that church and I talked to him and I said, would it be possible to use this room? And I'm, I wasn't from his church, you know. And uh, amazingly, God opened the door and gave me favor with this leader. And so we started an alpha course. And over the next nine months, we had 60 people from 30 different nations coming to hear the gospel 11 of them were powerfully impacted by the gospel wow. and at the end of that nine month period i was able to baptize five of my university friends which was just the most amazing time i just felt like i'm on the most incredible adventure with god but it was really challenging you know when god first said to me i want you to start church but how am i going to do that i i hadn't been trained you, you know what yeah, i mean yeah and I think sometimes when we have been trained, we can put our trust maybe in our training. And I hadn't been trained and I knew I had to rely on what God is saying to me, what I see in the word of God and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And it was scary at times, but I saw, and this is something I have to say, I saw fruit 
that I'd never seen before.、Mm-hmm. But I think that that fruit comes not only when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but when you are led by the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when we listen to what He's telling us to do and we do it, even though it is scary, that's when we really see Him work and we see the fruit that comes、um, for His kingdom. Summarize for us a little bit, David. How was your journey? Because you just started a church during this period, and you led this church. But tell us, how did you get here? And tell us a little bit about your family, your wife. Yeah. So that church that I started, that was in the, my second year of university,、mm-hmm. and in my third year, I had to leave the university and go for a year work placement because I was studying business.、Mm-hmm. And I contacted the leader of a large Christian ministry in England and asked if I could work at that ministry for that year. And I had been there just about a week, and、uh, a young lady from Germany arrived、uh, for the ministry school that they were running. And I met her in the dinner queue, and、uh, I saw that she was from Germany. And I'd been to Germany a few times on mission trips, and German was also my favourite subject at、wow. school. So we just started talking, and we sat down together for lunch. And as I was sitting there talking with her, this wasn't like anything that had ever happened with another a girl or a woman that I'd met with before. But it was like almost like curtains opened, and I could see in through her eyes into her heart. And I saw, wow, there's something really beautiful inside this woman. And obviously, I didn't say anything to her.、Yeah. Um, but as the months went by, I began to pray and ask God, "Is this the woman you've called me to marry?" And and eventually, long story short, we got married, and we had two children in England, two girls, and that was around the time that God gave me a vision. I was in prayer, and I received a vision of our family driving through what we call mainland Europe, right?、Mm-hmm. Because England is an, an island.、Yeah. Through mainland Europe, and I knew in the vision that we were teaching and ministering to people in lots of different countries. And I saw that vision three times in the space of six months.、Mm-hmm. And when I saw the vision the third time, I thought, I can't ignore this anymore.、Yeah. God is speaking to me. God wants us to go. And I didn't know if it was going to be just a few months or a few years or if we would permanently move. So we began to seek God and we began to pray. And I can't go into all the details now, but God made it clear that He wanted us to move to Hungary. And of course, you know that if you look at the map of Europe. Hungary is right, right in, in the, the middle,、center. yeah, and so it's actually an ideal place to be ministering、yeah. in lots of different countries from.、Um, but once we realised that God was sending us, I remember I went to speak to my leaders at the ministry that we were working for, and、uh, I said, "I feel God's calling us to go to Hungary and to minister in different countries." And they said, "We'll give you our blessing, but we can't pay you,、yeah. so there'll be no salary." And so I had two children. My wife was actually pregnant at this time,、third. and I started to panic. How are we going to find a house? How are we going to pay for food? How are we going to send our children to school? And there were all these questions. And I would say for three months, I was worried.、Mm-hmm. And you know, I knew what Jesus said in Matthew six thirty three. He said,、um, "Don't worry about these things. Basically, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. All these things will be given to you. Don't worry about tomorrow." And and one day I just got on my knees in my bedroom and I just said, "God, I'm so sorry. You've said not to worry about these things, and I've been really worried about these things." And and as I said sorry, it was like the fear just lifted off,、mm-hmm. and I said, "God, I'm going to choose to believe that if You're leading us, You will provide for us." And then God started to speak into all the different fears that we had, and He started putting it on people's hearts to support us financially, so that we could go and we could start ministering. And we've been to so many different countries and see God do so many amazing things. And we now have two more children, so two born in Budapest, another girl, so three girls, and a boy called Benjamin, same name as you. In what year did you move to Hungary, and what have you been doing ever since? So we moved here in 2016,、mm-hmm. and we started by travelling into lots of different countries, preaching the gospel and equipping people.、Um, but then, of course, the coronavirus pandemic hit two years ago, and and that was when I created a small film studio, and we have a small ministry building behind our house, and we started to make videos, and we started to translate those videos into other languages. And one of the first languages we translated into. 
was Hungarian, and that's the Fulfill Your Calling series. It's called How to Fulfill Your Calling. What are your plans with this video series? Will there be a new series? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so we've received lots of feedback already from Hungary and other countries that these videos are really impacting people and, and equipping them to fulfill God's calling on their life. So I have a kind of an unending plan to continue making new video series. I'm working right now on one. Uh, it's going to be called The Power of Words, which mm -hmm. should be released later this year. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of work involved. You know, I have to prayerfully seek God, prepare the teaching, record it, then we have to translate it, then we have to find somebody who can either put that into subtitles or dubbing mm -hmm. um, but yeah we're really looking forward to releasing more videos and seeing people's lives changed through the power of the gospel tell us a little bit about when the true splinters foundation was started and what your plans are with that ministry so uh, a few years after being here in Hungary, God started to raise up other missionaries, Hungarian missionaries. So we formed a, a small team and mm -hmm. we realized that um, God wanted us to start an Alapitvan. Mm -hmm. and, and it took us a little bit of time, actually, to establish it. And it was finally established in March 2021. And, and so we've been doing events in Budapest called mm -hmm. Truth and Power Nights. And, and our vision with those events is to see people experience the truth of God, the presence of God and the power of God. And we've seen people give their lives to Jesus in those events. And we've seen people baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive visions about what God is calling them to do. Um, but right now we're working a lot on the videos and it's just our vision really is to do th three things. It's to equip, encourage and inspire believers to fulfill God's calling on their lives. And, and the, the main kind of vision of Truth Planters is to plant the life-transforming truth mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ into the hearts of people everywhere. So our vision is, is international. It's not limited to just Hungary mm -hmm. or just Europe. And we, we don't plan too far in advance. We try to um, just really wait on the Lord and listen to the Lord uh, to tell us what it is that he wants us to do, which can be challenging at times. And then we try to step forward as he opens mm -hmm. doors um, just to see lives change for his glory. Okay, so if people are interested in how they can get to these events that you have, uh, how they can attend to it, um, help us a little bit with that. Well, the best way to follow Truth Planters is probably on Facebook, mm -hmm. and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's where you'll find all of our videos. Mm -hmm. That's where we post information about where we're going and what we're doing, and that's where you'll probably get encouraged and inspired in your walk with God. Why did you make the video series titled How to Fulfill Your Calling and what was the purpose behind it? Well, I've traveled to a lot of different countries, to a lot of different churches, and, and two of the biggest questions that, that, that come to me are, David, how can I know what God's calling is on my life? And secondly, how can I fulfill the calling that God has on my life? And I think there are a lot of people who feel like that. They, they know because they read in the Bible that they've been chosen. They know that they've been called. They know that they've been gifted by God. Not everybody knows what gifts they've got or what gifts God wants to give them, but they have a sense that they're here for a purpose. And I think that's right. I don't think we can read the Bible and think anything different. But the question is, how can I find out what God is calling me to do and fulfill it? And I think that's, that's the reason that I recorded the series but of course there are loads of aspects to that and I think one of the most important things we've got to understand is that you cannot fulfill God's calling on your life in your natural ability and there seems to be a pattern that God follows when he wants to achieve something on the earth first of all he has something in his will that he wants to achieve Secondly, he speaks it out. He makes it clear whether it's through his prophets or whether he reveals it to you by his spirit or through his word. Mm -hmm. But thirdly, he always empowers a man or a woman by his spirit to do the thing that he wants to do. And I think that's amazing because if we're fulfilling God's calling on our lives, 
we know that it's not us, that it's him doing it through us. And therefore, all of the glory goes to him. So one aspect is that it's so important that people understand what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But then if you look at the example of Jesus, he wasn't only full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit and he operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I believe that we need to do those three things if we're going to fulfill God's calling on our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and that sounds great, but what happens then when difficulties come and, and when our life doesn't go as we expected and there are challenges? So some of the things we talk about in this video series are how to deal with the internal struggles that we mm -hmm. have, things like fear, mm -hmm. things like pride, uh, addictions, something that I struggled with for many years was an addiction to pornography. Mm -hmm. And God led me out of that addiction. Mm -hmm. And I'm sharing keys that people can actually take hold of and use to walk in the freedom that God wants to give them. But also, how do we deal with the external struggles? How can we persevere through trials? Because often somebody starts very well and then something unexpected or something difficult happens in their life and they shrink back. Mm -hmm. And they stop walking in the direction God was calling them in or they stop using their gift. The, the Bible says uh, that God doesn't like it when we shrink back. So how do we keep moving forward in faith and confidence when there are difficulties coming? And, and one of the episodes um, in the series is on that as well. What is your experience of how Hungarian people react to the gospel? A little differently than at home in England? Yeah, I think um, England is perhaps even more of a secular society mm -hmm. than Hungary. And what I've noticed in, in this generation is that there are a lot of people who associate themselves with a Christian church or denomination. So they'll say, I'm Catholic or I'm Reformed or I'm Baptist. But not all of those people have really understood the gospel and not all of them really know God. And of course, Jesus said that eternal life is to know him. So actually, it doesn't really matter which church we go to or, or what label we put on ourselves. What's really important is that we truly know God. And we have to understand what the true gospel is in order to enter into a relationship with God. And this is one of the things that I share in the How to Fulfill Your Calling series. But I think really to simplify it, we've got to understand that the message of the gospel is that Jesus has given up everything for you and he's calling us to give up our lives for him. So it's not just that we believe that Jesus was God. Actually, we have to believe that God raised him from the dead. That's a really important part of our faith. We have to believe that he died for our sins and so that we could be forgiven. But one thing that's often forgotten is the word repentance. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we turn. We turn from yeah. the life that we were living and we start following Jesus. And, you know, there's this saying that says it doesn't matter how long you uh, sit in a garage. It doesn't make you a car. True. It's the same with church. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church or how many years you've been in church. If you haven't received the true gospel and given your life to Jesus, it doesn't make you a Christian. Right. True. And so I think that there's that aspect. And then there's one other thing that I've noticed is that there seems to be a lot of confusion in Hungary when it comes to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, how important it is. Uh, people ask questions like, do I need to be baptized in water before I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit? Doesn't every Christian automatically receive the Holy Spirit when they come to Christ? And there are just so many questions that people have. Um, and, and I find that actually, if people would stop and just read through the book of Acts from beginning to end, you would find that almost all of your questions about the Holy Spirit are answered. And actually, Really, there is no Christian life without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So this is not something that we can just think, ah, oh, I'll just yeah. be confused yeah. about yeah. it. It doesn't matter. No, it's really, really important. And actually, if you want to fulfill God's calling on your life, you cannot do that without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So I'm teaching a lot on what is true salvation and what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit um, here in Hungary. 
David, arra kélek, hogy David, can you please tell our dear viewers why they should watch the series that you have made and how they will benefit from it? Well, I believe that God has more for your life than you're currently experiencing. I believe that somebody who's truly walking like Jesus walked, which is to be full of the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, and to be operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that those people have an adventure. And I believe that God has an adventure for you. It's not going to be without difficulties or challenges. But in this video series, I am sharing the keys that you need to be able to walk in the calling that God has on your life. And of course, we will never be satisfied and we will never be content until we are doing what God created us to do, what he put us on the earth to do. And you know, Jesus said this, and I want to remind you of this right now in John 15, 16, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit, fruit that lasts. And I believe that if you watch this video series, How to Fulfill Your Calling, that you will learn amazing keys that are going to enable you to fulfill God's calling on your life and bear the fruit that he's called you to bear, bringing much glory to him and doing great things for his kingdom. Thank you so much, David, for being with us and sharing things from your heart that are precious to you. We wish you a blessing here for your work in Hungary. Thank you, Benjamin. It's been a pleasure to be with you.